get over here! Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to another episode of Quarantine, the weekly video series where I talk about the latest in movies and entertainment. This week's going to be a little shorter because there's not a lot to talk about, but there are a couple stories that I thought I would take the time out to discuss. Getting right into it, we got the first official trailer for the Mortal Kombat movie, only two months away from its release, which I actually appreciate when movies wait to the last possible minute to release trailers just to build the anticipation as much as they possibly can. And overall, my viewpoint of watching trailers is usually I try to avoid them as much as possible, but sometimes I I don't care enough to actually avoid it. I usually avoid trailers for bigger movies like the Marvel Cinematic Universe projects or any smaller independent property that I kind of want to just go in as fresh as I possibly can. Most of the A24 movies I avoid trailers altogether because I know I'm going to see it. But being that I'm not a huge fan of the Mortal Kombat series, I thought I would watch this trailer just to kind of get a sense of what they're going for. To be honest, I was more of a Soul Calibur guy growing up. My brother and I used to play that game to death. I think it was Soul Calibur 3 or Soul Calibur 4, but I do have enough appreciation for the Mortal Kombat series to respect its lore and its history and everything that it's done over the years for fighting games. I don't know too much about the lore, but I do know that it's based around a century-old tradition of pitting the most powerful fighters against each other. And there's a little bit of a feud between Scorpion and Sub-Zero, and I know Raiden is kind of like from the future. Again, I don't know too much about it. But honestly, after seeing this trailer, I'm more interested in diving into the history and the lore of Mortal Kombat. I'm probably going to go pick up Mortal Kombat X or Mortal Kombat 11 just to kind of get a feel of who the characters are and what the game is trying to achieve. But honestly, I was surprised at how much I like this trailer. It's cheesy, but it doesn't seem as cheesy as the original Mortal Kombat movie, which people will argue is the best live action video game movie to date. Hey, I'm going to defend Detective Pikachu to its last breath. And Sonic the Hedgehog wasn't terrible. Sarcasm. Especially if you put it in the grand scope of the movies that came out in 2020, it's probably the best. Don't do that anymore. But I remember the original Mortal Kombat movie. It was hokey and fun. It was a product of its time, and people still hold it to a higher degree to this day. So to see diehard Mortal Kombat fans super excited about this new adaptation coming out, being a little bit more true to the characters, and treating the world and the characters with a lot more respect, it makes my heart as a video game fan swell. Grew three sizes that day. The story seems like a generic call to arms hero story that will probably end up being predictable in the end, but it looks like it's going to be giving us those fights that we're so familiar with from the video game. The one-on-one -on -one head to head battles. Sub Zero. Get over here. And it looks like they're throwing a ton of characters in here. Most of them are probably going to be cameos at best. But the fact that you're able to see all of these characters on screen is really exciting. And something I took away from the trailer is the music. It seems to be paying a great deal of homage to the original Mortal Kombat score. It's got that electronic synthesizer 80s style that the original game was so well known for. Part of it seems like paint by numbers, but at the same time, them adding the original theme at the end is a beautiful tip of the hat. Bin, bin. It is kind of funny that this might end up being our best video game movie adaptation, releasing on HBO Max and not even in theaters. I know for the longest time that people harp on video game movies being bad and it's got this like negative voodoo surrounding it, that anytime a live action video game adaptation is attempted, it's automatically deemed bad. But when I think of video game movies, I equate it very much to comic book movies, especially when they were first coming out. Comic book movies to general audiences used to be looked at as silly and not real cinema. There are directors today that still think that way. Uh, the Marvel type pictures. Where, where the theaters become amusement parks. And it wasn't until you had people that actually read comics and cared about the source material come in and attempt to make these movies that the product actually started getting good. The same could be said about video game movies. Maybe they're not good because we haven't had people that play video games and care about video games as much as they should in charge of making these movies. Once we get diehard video game nerds in the director's seats and in the writer's rooms, video game movies are going to continue being studio driven who don't have a clear understanding of what video game fans want from a live action movie. And that's the inherent problem. For a Mortal Kombat movie, it makes sense to have a gory fight fest as the main focus of the story, because that's what the fans of the video games like. If you were to do a Legend of Zelda movie, there would be no blue beam shooting into the sky. Instead, you would take elements from other mythical movies, like Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones. But you also have to give it that cartoonish feel that made the game so popular. The Last of Us shouldn't be The Walking Dead. It's basically The Road and Logan meeting a Walking Dead movie. You have to take the elements from things that work in the movies and the elements that work in the games and combine 
combine the two so that you have a unified product. And that's why I think The Last of Us show on HBO will work because you have the creative director behind The Last of Us joined with a creative showrunner that's a fan of the series. You have to find that perfect harmony to make it work. And once that happens, video game movies might get the same level of respect that comic book movies are getting now, which leads us to our next story. We finally got an official title, maybe to Spider-Man 3, now titled Spider-Man No Way Home. The way they revealed this announcement was cute and fun. It was Tom Holland, Zendaya, and Jacob Batalon walking out of John Watts, the director's office, claiming that he gave them another fake title. Because yesterday, all three of them posted to their individual social media accounts, announcing different titles for Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man Home Slice, which was announced by Zendaya, Spider-Man Home Wrecker, which was announced by Jacob Batalon, and Spider-Man Phone Home, which was announced by Tom Holland himself. I saw a lot of people on social media trying to speculate what each of these titles mean, claiming that each title referenced a different Spider-Man in the Spider-Man universe, that Home Wrecker was a reference to Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man because he wrecked the home of the Stacys, that Home Slice was a reference to Tobey Maguire because... Pizza time. And that Phone Home was somehow a reference to Tom Holland because he's always on his phone. I don't know. I think everybody's reaching. I honestly think that they were just trying to tease us, which they were. And now we maybe have an official title. I kind of think they missed the mark on this one. Personally, I feel like they should have called it Spider-Man Home for the Holidays, especially if it's going to revolve around Christmas, which my brother was predicting for a couple of years now. And in another video that I'm releasing soon, talking about the Spider-Man 3 casting rumors, I kind of break down why it would make sense for it to be called that. Based on all of the set photos and based on Iron Man 3 setting being set around Christmas. Either way, could have been fun. But this title makes sense. It's a natural progression of Spider-Man Homecoming, which was a nice little reference to Spider-Man coming back to the MCU and being set during his time in high school. Spider-Man Far From Home was him getting away from the responsibilities of being Spider-Man for a little bit, only to be dragged back in. And Spider-Man No Way Home seems like a necessary conclusion to this Spider-Man high school story of him now being hunted with his identity being revealed. So in my opinion, it's fine. It isn't. Along with the title announcement, we got a couple of new photos, which right off the bat are giving me some Goonies vibes for some reason. I don't think they're gonna meet a Cyclops named Sloth or whatever, or find a pirate ship deep within the caves, but this dark imagery kind of gives me that ragtag team of heroes trying to uncover secrets, maybe secrets of the multiverse, if we're still believing that the multiverse is any way tied to this, because Tom Holland claims that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are not in the movie. Yeah, like I'm gonna believe you. Marvel has trained him well. He knows how to hold his spoilers back now. Let us not forget that he was one of the first people to know about Iron Man dying. And he kept that a secret. I feel like we talked about this like way back in 2016. I feel like we did too. Yeah. You guys have known for that long? I mean, I've known for a really long yeah. time, yeah. Good job, Mr. Holland. Wow, you guys lie with such ease. I love seeing our trio of FOS. Friend of Spider-Man. Get shit done together. It's cool. And from these set photos, it looks like there's snow on the ground, matching up with the other set photos that we got. But I just want to ask one question. Where is your damn coats? It's cold out there. Something else also slipped through the news headlines this week, and that's that Danny Elfman, the original composer for the first Spider-Man trilogy, will be rejoining director Sam Raimi and scoring Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. This is insanely exciting and could mean a lot of different things. If we are still believing the multiverse rumors surrounding Spider-Man 3, then this would make a lot of sense. Why else would they have gotten Sam Raimi to direct Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness on top of the rumors of Tobey Maguire returning as Spider-Man in Spider-Man 3? Something tells me that Tobey will be involved in Doctor Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And something that my friend Ken has been predicting for a while now is that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness could open with the classic Spider-Man theme. Can you even imagine sitting down in that theater, hopefully, with tickets to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness? You get all cozy in your seat and the movie opens. <laughs> Spider-Man 4. And we get the first 10 minutes of the movie catching us up to where Peter is now following Spider-Man 3. And then a portal opens. And who steps out but Doctor Strange himself. And he says, Peter, I need your help putting the multiverse back together. <laughs> but we don't write the movies. And some of our ideas are better than what they will probably do anyways. So the chances of that happening are rather unlikely. Sorry, Ken. Unacceptable condition! If you liked hearing me talk about any of these topics, be sure to subscribe. I'll be putting out videos like this every week. I'm also releasing spoiler reviews for episodes of WandaVision. There are four reviews on my channel right now, so be sure to check those out and keep your eyes peeled for the upcoming episode reviews. I'll also be putting out reviews for Falcon and the Winter Soldier when it drops next month. And if you'd like, follow me on Twitter. You can come yell at me about any of these topics I talked about today, as well as give me some of your ideas about what you think is happening in Spider-Man 3. And like I said before, I'm also releasing a video talking about the Spider-Man 3 casting rumors. You can be sure to check that out on my channel once it's released. And 
and make sure to follow me on Twitch because I'm going to be playing some video games here soon. Probably going to be replaying the Spider-Man PS4 games as a way to kind of hype me up for the new Spider-Man movie. But I got to get my computer fixed before I do any of that. So hang tight, give me a follow just to prepare yourself, and I will be with you momentarily. But until next time, it's pizza time. Thanks a lot. Bye.